Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, a place where creatives share their stories. My name is Galina Marquez and I have another cool story prepared for you today, so let's get to it. Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast. And today we have uh, an interesting guest. It was interesting for me because I feel like I know this woman for a little while because I even stole one of her works for some of my art classes. <laughs> and she was very <laughs> gracious to uh, be very nice about it. Um, so, Alison Duran, uh, do I pronounce it correctly? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, from Canada, from Calgary. Mm-hmm, that's right. Uh, and I will let her introduce herself. Hi, Alison. Oh. Thank you. Hi, Galena. Thank you so much for having me. I feel so honored to be here. So yeah, my name is Alison Durant and I'm uh, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I love to paint. I paint every day and uh, I don't know what more to say other than it's become such a passion of mine and I feel almost a survival. Um, You know, I feel like um, when I, I gave up nursing, actually, after being in healthcare for almost 25 years, uh, I decided in uh, 2000 to give up my nursing license and to become a full-time artist. Um, I'm also a part-time stay-at-home mom to a four-year-old. Um, but yeah, I live, eat, breathe painting. <laughs> wow. So uh, how do you how do you find time to paint every day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good question. You know, um, I strive for balance every day because it really is hard. Uh, I have to make a conscious, um, conscientious effort every day to have the art supplies where I can see them and have access to a space. And uh, just like putting on your runners and your exercise gear, you're more likely to work out. So yeah, I try and keep those reminders around me. And I think because I'm so passionate about art, I always have inspiration coming from everywhere all the time. And so I don't, I don't find it hard to make the time. Um, I I just love it so much. So even if it's just five or 10 minutes at the end of my day, I might just watch an art video or engage in a class that I'm taking online or, um, you know, just sit down with a travel set of watercolors if that's all I have available. Um, and yeah, for me, it's almost like that mental health break. Yeah, because when I look at your work and uh, you're you're prolific, you're posting on Instagram almost every day, I would say. Yeah. And, and when yes. I look at your work, it's so it, it feels like it, it definitely feels like you don't even need to look for subject. It just everything comes to you and everything inspires you. That's amazing. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. So um, I had a question while you were talking you were saying that uh have the art supplies available sort of like uh like make the space for yourself where everything is set up and you have no excuses to mm-hmm. not do it mm-hmm. this is actually interesting because this morning i was journaling and i was reflecting on on my own studio practice which is unfortunately very infrequent nowadays and I was like, why is that? Why is that? I, uh, I have a little studio. It's in the garage. I have all, uh, all the art supplies out there, but I just don't go there. Mm-hmm. So um, how do you make those things available? The space, the art supplies. So like, tell me about your process. Share with me because I badly <laughs> need it. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, um, yeah, so you you said your art supply, your, or sorry, your space is in a shed. So yeah, I suppose that's um, something if you don't, you know, pass by it, or if you're, you're at home more, if it's not something that, um, if you don't have that constant reminder. So um, yeah, I, for me, I had to create a space and I really invested in my art and myself to create a nicer space um, just over this past year. Uh, because I have a four-year-old at home, I like to be very conscientious about, you know, toxicity of art supplies mm-hmm. and also a, a, a pet. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I did at many times, you know, um, when my son was younger, he would nap for a couple hours during the day and I would quickly run and grab as many supplies as I could and get them out on the table and get out all these ideas. And then I would try and predict when he was going to wake up and, you know, move them into, you know, a box or a side place. But uh, yeah, I invested in a space because you really you ideally need to create a space for yourself, even if it's really small, you know, just a corner of the house. 
something you see all the time. You know, um, I love the idea of um, an art shed. I think that's really neat. Uh, for me, though, I do need to see it. Uh, you know, um, and after I was just thinking after I work on a piece, uh, at least when I first started painting, I would do the first, you know, just layer or the first practice or art journal page. And then I would put it up in a place where in the evenings when I was watching TV with my husband or winding down, I could look at it. And I think, you know, it's it's funny, I'd be watching TV and he's like, oh, you're thinking about your painting, I can tell, or I can see <laughs> you looking at your, your page. And, you know, I, I slowly started to surround myself with my art. And it was a practice of, you know, hey, did I, um, you know, what do I love about this piece? What would I do differently? What do I want to work on tomorrow? So, you know, it's not like I would just create a whole piece as I sat down. I would just create layers and something that spoke to me in the moment. So even if it was that five minutes of a travel set of watercolors, getting it out and getting down some color I liked, you know, that might be what I would put up on the fireplace in the evening and look at. And then the next day I would kind of know, oh, you know, I, I really, I love this color. I'm going to use more of it. Or I really want to try doing an illustration or a word on top. And I just didn't hold back. And I didn't, um, I, you know, whenever I have an idea, I just, I do it. I don't overthink it. And that took a lot of practice. Um, <laughs> well, probably yeah, that's for sure. Not not overthinking something does take a lot of practice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. so, and you said that you were um, uh, you were a nurse for almost twenty five years, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, did you study art before that, or you just picked it up yourself and and do as like as you feel? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, when I was working as an RN, I did a very small uh, number of years uh, in an adolescent mental health unit, uh, children's mental health. And so we would do a lot of, you know, arts on the unit. And uh, I, I suppose I had to turn on that creative thinking while I was also in the academic world of nursing. And, um, you know, I, I would learn to kind of play and get to know the patients through, um, I suppose, art therapy. So, you know, I did, I did probably engage in a very creative life, I would say. Um, my parents are very creative. My dad's a woodworker, and he still does a lot of my uh, woodwork, my wood panels, so I'm so lucky. Um, he's a huge inspiration. Uh, my mom as well, she's a seamstress. She loves to sew. She still sews, whether it's masks or, um, you know, uh, she's just always, always looking for fabrics and patterns. And uh, yeah, so I come from creativity. Uh, and I had a little jewelry line, like a little jewelry business before I started in art. And when I would get home from nursing shifts, uh, it was just more feeling like I wanted to work with my hands with jewelry. Um, and then I ran into some health challenges and they thought maybe I had a nickel allergy. And, you know, everything these days um, is pretty much nickel free. But when I was working, I um, there was actually nickel in the pliers and the tools I was using. And I would get so sick, I would actually be, uh, I'd been hospitalized and had to go oh, on prednisone. Wow. And I had a whole immune response from it. So wow. They said, you need to stop this and find something different. And that was really tough. But it also was what led me to painting um, because I thought, gosh, I have to do something. And um, going through the health challenges, you know, I had more time on my more time on my hands. And I started art journaling and I started um, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm self-taught in the sense that I didn't go to art school. You know, mm -hmm. I went to. <laughs> to nursing school but I um I uh just love classes so you know I've taken so many uh artist classes you know I've been really grateful to have been able to um invest in you know a class here and there and uh like I said in the evening if I'm too tired to paint sometimes I would just put on a video or a YouTube video on art journaling and um I'm kind of I always go off subject because I get so excited. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I just, um, you know, art journaling is what started it. And I think I was journaling both for my own mental health, it made me feel better. Um, I was like, wow, there's so many videos online with mixed media and art journaling. And I just started to buy some different supplies and play around. And I was addicted to that process. And um, and I didn't care what it looked like. And, and for me, that was... Um, something um 
it wasn't easy for me. And I think it was just that practice of knowing this is for me. Um, I'm going to just do what I want with color or collage or just practice this lesson. And um, it's definitely, it was a practice to get to where I am today, which is again, that like trying to turn off what it looks like and that perfectionistic angle. Cause I do have a bit of that. Um, but the art journaling was so wonderful because it was a safe space to just create. And um, I never liked writing or journaling. Um, I know the benefits of that for mental health, but um, it became just art journaling and then eventually selling my art. So it boomed from this hobby to this full-time business. And, you know, I think it was, I call it lockdown luck in 2020. Um, it was sort of my survival. Um, I was home so much and I just kept creating and kept watching art videos and um, slowly started to sell my work. And uh, I think people were at least where I am locally in Calgary, people were all under lockdown and they were looking for art for their homes or their Zoom backgrounds. And they were looking for that joy that original art brings. And so I just, I just started selling saying curbside pickup and, you know, would sell like a little watercolor painting just for maybe $20 and put it in my mailbox. <laughs> and it's so funny that I think about it now, but it, it kind of took off as this business. That's amazing. That's amazing. And that's actually not the first uh, story about uh, this pandemic and the lockdown specifically being a boost for someone creative to take their career on the, on the next level or just, you know, it happened to happen because, you know, the stars aligned and uh, mm -hmm. other people started paying more attention to art. And uh, yeah, it's just it's it's great. It's great. Yeah, it, it really was um, a good time for me anyway. And to be an artist, you know, because yeah, would I have gone, would I have started selling my work? Probably not if I wasn't under lockdown and under some different stressors and looking for just, um, you know, a different kind of occupation or hobby. So it, um, I, at the beginning, I, I must have misheard the, the some, some dates, the years that you mentioned. So when did you start at painting? Oh, yeah. So, so again, I've been sort of creative my whole life. But as far as, you know, painting, um, I had bought paints like, you know, when I was um, working as a nurse, like in my 20s and 30s, and I just would let them dry up. I just was like, I felt like I don't want to waste them. I'm just going to save them for like when I'm really good and I can do a great big canvas. And and then years later, they would just dry up. And, you know, looking back on that, I thought I never want that to happen again. And um, I started... Um, Again, I was having some uh, different health challenges. Um, I went through IVF. I was having sort of um, having to be home for appointments and also was working in a very high stress nursing job at the time. And uh, that was all around 2018, um, mm -hmm. 2017, 2018. That's when I started art journaling. So it's actually been you know, it feels like I've been doing it forever, but I suppose that's because it I does. do it every day. It does, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely been, I think I started buying supplies in 2017 and then really got into it in 2018, art journaling and just play every day. Uh, it was like going to yoga class, but for me, it was that art meditation and zoning out and just, uh, again, just that practice of showing up for 10 minutes um, buying a new art pen uh, at the craft store and just trying to figure out how to use it. And uh, yeah, and then 2019, I took this amazing course um, where you do 100 small paintings. Um, it's called the Fresh Paint Course from Flora mm -hmm. Bowley, which is um, uh -huh. a beautiful intuitive artist out of Portland. And uh, yeah, she had this, uh, this paint course where you would do 100 small works, so about, you know, nine inches square or less. And then uh, there's very little pressure um, on it unless, you know, it's the pressure you put on yourself, but they just said, you know, have the goal of painting a hundred small paintings within a six month period. And uh, when I looked at my art journal and I thought, well, that's, that's easy because, you know, it's just like sitting down and playing and experimenting. And that's sort of how they were teaching people to find their own style. So that course at the end, um, uh, Flora and uh, Lindsay Lynx, who is, um, a partner in the course they both were so generous and they shared their social media platform and said you know at the end of the course if you'd like you can voluntarily uh, submit 10 paintings of these little mm -hmm. nine inch or eight inch square paintings um, where you really feel you've honed in on your own style at that 100 or you know whether it was 50 or 100 paintings um, and uh, 
they would uh, advertise for you worldwide on their social media, on Instagram. And we all agreed to sell our paintings for about $50 Canadian or 60 US, I can't remember, but that starting entry point of, you know, where you value your work, Mm -hmm. but you're not quite there yet to sell it for a lot. Um, And yeah, that course, um, I was so surprised, but I, I had interest in my work. And I think it just gave me a boost of confidence and I was like wow I can actually sell my work and that's crazy and and it was right from there December of 2019 I sold my first painting for money someone came to my home and bought it and um yeah and then it became like almost an addictive process of like well I love this like I'm gonna keep doing it and and now I'm just really striving for what we talked about at the beginning which is how do you find balance right how do you find the time because you know, I do miss out on going to the gym or like having an exercise routine. I'm really lucky. I have a rescue dog who comes in my studio and he reminds me every day, Hey, we need to go for a walk now (laughs) because I love painting so much. Every spare moment I'm painting. Wow. I got to ask you. So, uh, your owls, uh, Oh yes. (laughs) The owl series. Was it, was it a part of the Flora Bowley's, uh, course or was it something separate? That's a great question. Uh, no, the owls, um, you know, I just, my, my grandma loved owls so much and, uh, she was such a beautiful person. And I, I just, I'd seen some really beautiful owls. There's so many artists that have done them in such a unique way. And from different courses I took, I just sort of pulled together, my own kind of version of an owl, you know, I was inspired by many artists. um, And I found them just so fun. And I was never good at drawing. But I thought, well, the owls are so simple. They're just, you know, two round eyes. And if I can get the nose in the right place, (laughs) or the beak, (laughs) the nose. um, Yeah, and uh, those really resonated with people. And then I love plays on words, so puns. And so I, I would title the owls, um, I will isolate with you because it was the pandemic. And so, uh-huh. and it's funny just because people like just loved that. I think they, you know, there's such a love for owls. They're so unique, such beautiful creatures and so many varieties. You can't mess them up. <laughs> so I just got into these abstract owls and I love that you took that on for, I, yeah, for students. I, I, I got I got to talk a little bit about that because I think this is, this was something uh, like, uh, this was the first thing that I started seeing on my Instagram. And this is how I discovered you. It's like, oh, these are adorable. So I immediately oh, started following you. And uh, at some point, actually during lockdown, uh, the way it happened, uh, local, um, my neighbors actually in the complex where I live, asked me to take their kids uh, about, they all are about eight, nine years old. Because kids were glued to their computers in the lockdown, schools are at home, parents are working at home, they have no like outdoors activity. Yeah. And uh, we live in California, it's it's always sunny and nice and whatever. So they asked me to to do some uh, art activities with them. And I was doing it a couple of times a week, uh, right on my driveway, just putting wow. the tent for the shed. That's amazing. I, with a folding table and stuff. Yeah. And I was always trying to bring something for them that would be not, uh, like would be sparking their interest at the same time would not be, you know, like a classic painting, classic drawing, something, something not that challenging and something that will give them room for experimenting. And we did, we did your owls. I love them. I saw them. They're amazing. It was so cool. It was so fun. They were, uh, when, when I showed them the example, like, yeah, no, it's, it's really complex. We cannot do that. Like, no, it's actually very easy. We should, we should try it. And we had so much fun. Oh, and they were amazing. Everyone named their owl and it was oh. really great. And oh. then, and then what happened? I started taking it to adult classes. Amazing. <laughs> and what I discovered in adult class is that, uh, well, I got, I got to make a remark, uh, uh, for everyone who's listening, if you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> I will make sure to put those owls in the blog post and you have to oh. go to Allison's Instagram and scroll all the way down to 2020. <laughs> and yeah, they're quite those. a ways back. <laughs> I, I've been thinking of doing more, so stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. So uh, I started taking them to adult classes and what happened, not only they're fun and they're uh, leaving room for experiments, especially for adults who were like, 
uh, yeah, when, whenever a painter, we don't know, like, you know, sometimes uh, they would th think about this sip and paint kind of class, which is quite <laughs> right. popular, but I find yeah. them very dull and uh, uninteresting because, you know, you have a subject and you're going like step by step. There's no mm -hmm. room for creativity. Absolutely. Uh, in this situation, I was able to get them, uh, you know, to, to the place where they would, you know, actually access their creativity and experiment. And oh, at the same time, teaching them how to mix their own colors, I would always bring only primary colors and black and white. And we would mix all the color, colors for the owl wow. in the class. I would show them that. I would uh, give them a little bit of a, a theory about how to combine the classes, warms with warms, cool, cools with cools, you know. So a little bit of education, uh, a little Wonderful. bit of experiment, and a little bit of play mixing out different colors. And that was so great. Wow. And I, I'm, you know, sometimes I feel a little bit embarrassed that it's not like my subject <laughs> <laughs> oh no gosh no you know nothing of mine is um original like you know I strive to make it my own style but they I think um in that book uh steal like an artist it says you know try to um emulate not imitate but you know we all learn from imitating like, yeah I've, true. I've learned like everything I'm painting I'm just pulling from all the inspiration from all the artists classes I've taken and all these amazing artists all over the world. Like it's at our fingertips now. And, you know, um, and everyone's inspiration is drawn from different places, but yeah, I never, it took me a while to really feel like I could call a style my own because I'm like, well, technically like I, everything I practice was looking off of something else, but, but yeah, it's just, um, I think that's why I paint every day. It's because the more I paint, the more it becomes my own. And um, so I feel that's just so exciting because I, deep down, I know it's my own because I've worked so hard just to to sit down and just pull it out of my head. Yeah, well, I, I always give you credits in the classes when I when I do an owl. <laughs> Thank you. And I always Aww. share with people your Instagram. So if you if you have like a little splurge of you know new followers, that's probably from me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I love that you I love what you did about um just taking it to an, a level of teaching adults and teaching a little bit of color theory because you know it's just when I first started, you know, I didn't have that base and I thought I had to go buy, like, you know, if I saw a beautiful color, I thought I had to go buy the color, you know, even if it was dollar store, you know, brand, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to mix. And so, you know, I, I kind of stumbled on how to do color theory and recently obviously um, learned more about it in, in classes, but yeah, it's just, um, I think, wow, I could have saved a lot of money in like <laughs> time if I'd known just buy red, yellow and blue. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and and I don't remember learning that in elementary school. And um, I wow, like just yeah, as an adult, you we really need to go back to that that play and that experimentation and and just knowing that it, yeah, um, I feel like anyone can be an artist. Anyone can sell their art now. It's just showing up and practicing and taking off that judgmental voice, that hat that we all wear. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Let's take a short coffee break. Are you enjoying this episode? If you do, would you buy me a coffee? I would really appreciate it. The link is in the show notes and on our website, intheartscene.com. Thank you for your support. I wanted also to talk to you about your newer series because you are oh. working with some adorable animals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right now I'm on a bit of a kick. Um, I've been on a cow kick for at least a year, maybe two years. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a llama kick. And uh, I, I've never been very good at birds, um, but I, I'd like it's to about get into owls. birds. Oh, about <laughs> owls, yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the animals, um, they're so much fun. Yeah. So I, it's not a very original title. <laughs> um, I called it flowers and farm friends because I, uh, I just love flowers. I love, I love farm animals. I love the combination. Um, I've uh, done a lot of, um, of uh, fundraising and uh, work for animal rescue, specifically horses, actually. So I'd like to paint more horses. But yeah, the cows became a fundraiser 
for the horses. And um, yeah, and then this, uh, I kind of rotate my collections. I've just started doing collections. It's a new thing for me. And uh, I'm trying to up my game professionally because I, you know, instead of just selling a painting every day off Instagram or once a week or once a month, you know, there is something that shows um, sort of a professional element when, when you call it a collection and when you tell the meaning of your uh, collection, the story behind it. And that's something that I really have to work at. It doesn't come naturally. Like I, I paint and I have the paintings and I have a lot of the farm animals or the, the flowers, but you know, I've been so used to um, just painting and selling or painting and listing um, that I'm, I'm really trying to restrain myself now. And that's, that's been a challenge because I'll finish a painting and I just want to share it and, and list it. And um, even if it's not bought for, you know, several months or a year, you know, it's just for me, I get that excitement um, where I'm trying to rein myself in and feel like you know like um I know the audience likes that you know build up of a collection and having a theme and knowing the story because when I post I'm not very good at words and I keep my posts quite short and I have all these words in my head and I I want to describe my art but it just doesn't come naturally and and again time I don't spend that time on social media I post it but I don't have this long description about my posts so yeah, I, I am starting. This is my second collection. I did one last month, which was a mountain series, mm -hmm. um, mostly watercolor. And uh, being in Calgary, Alberta, near the Rocky Mountains, it's sort of in our backyard. And I, I do love painting those. So I did I did a, a collection of um, of the mountains last month. And then this month, it was beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Um, but I, you know, probably such as yourself and others listening, uh, it's easy to get bored as an artist. So even if you know what people like and what will sell, I feel like I need to, every time I sit down and paint, say, this is for myself. I'm only going to paint what I feel would bring me joy, not because I think it will sell. Um, and so, yeah, I rotate. And I feel like whenever I've been a bit down or I feel like, you know, this Calgary cold spell and just everything we're going through, I paint cows when I want to find joy and it's so funny because my husband's like oh you're painting cows again <laughs> and he's like how are you doing <laughs> I was like I've been feeling a little down lately and the cows really make me happy <laughs> and uh yeah I find the farm animals I don't know there's something about it that just brings me joy when I finish the eyes and get it together and so yeah so this collection moving into this you know well February where it's slightly nicer here in Alberta um I find it's just, it brings me joy to paint flowers and animals. So I don't know if I answered your question, but. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, by, by the time this episode is on air, I think you will have probably one or two other collections and we'll make sure to <laughs> Possibly, advertise yeah. them too. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so kind. <laughs> but I totally, I totally know what you mean when you get bored and you need to like switch gears and, and, you know, just, just. To, to do something that makes you feel better. I, I used to joke that my biggest series is three and a half paintings. Oh, how do you, how do you mean? <laughs> well, That's because so funny. I'll, I'll, find, I'll find a subject that is like inspiring and I would, you know, get to it and it will be very elaborate and I'll make three, uh, three really decent pieces and I would have like a solid idea for the fourth one and I would start <laughs> and somewhere in the middle, I was like, yeah, I can't do that anymore. I need oh, to move on. So funny. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm glad. Yeah, I can relate to that too. And I, you know, I've had, I have so much admiration and respect for artists that can spend like several years on a painting yeah. and the detail I, I and the that. realism. <laughs> yeah. But for me, like I, my personality is much better at like almost not speed painting, but like just not, not overthinking it. I have to paint fairly quickly just to get out of my head. Um, yeah, and I'm like that too. I have a lot of paintings that I was excited and I started, and then um, I have a lot of layers that I've started. But um, you know, those layers may have been meant to be a cow, but then next month they might be flowers or something different for variety, right? So yeah, that's why a collection I do find hard. It's discipline. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you know, after so many, I'm I'm bored. Yeah. I well, I I progressed a little bit. Now my biggest collection is four and a half. <laughs> oh, okay. that's, that's awesome. And you know what? A collection at four and a half is perfect. <laughs> that's so funny. All right. So uh, does your son help you 
in the studio. Oh, that's so interesting. You know, it's so funny because um, when I sit down to do creative things with him, um, I think he has a short attention span. So he, he gets really interested and I get so excited and I, I get out all the supplies and all the colors or whatever. And, and you know, he'll just want to make brown paint. And, <laughs> and I guess it's like, you know, it's just such a lesson for me to like, you know, I think um, if I had kids earlier, like, you know, even before I started painting, I would have been like, I would have almost been trying to guide him into like what to do. And like, if he was just making brown paint, I would have been like, oh, look at this color. Like you can use, you know, red or this, this other color. Um, but yeah, he's, he's teaching me so many lessons about myself and that when I sit down and uh, paint or create with him you know if he's happy just painting with brown paint like that is great and he he might just spend a few minutes on it when I'm like oh well, we just got out all these supplies and I was hoping to spend like half an hour an hour at this and yeah but I'm I'm trying to learn that like I want him to just love what he's doing in the moment and not feel pressured and just just to love it and go with his instinct and so it's been a lesson for me not to get involved in like, if he's doing something, you know, I don't know, <laughs> using the brush for something else. Or I'm trying to let go of that. Right. Um, yeah. And he loves Play-Doh. Um, he loves Lego. Um, and I love like just that inspiration that, you know, translates to different activities. Um, I really credit his uh, preschool teacher he's had up until now, because I think, you know, when he's at school, he's, he's proud. He calls his mom an artist and yeah, um, it's so nice. <laughs> and all the kids in the neighborhood are like, Oh, there's, you know, she's a real artist. And it makes me like, just kind of like, wow, I can't believe like I'm hearing that right now. Cause I never thought I'd be called a real artist, but like, this is so compliment sweet from little kids. Um, but yeah, he, he gets so much joy from it when he's with a group of kids, but when he comes home, and I try to get out, you know, the art supplies. He's not interested with me. And I think that's because he he likes the company. He likes the social part of the activities. So um, my husband's always like, you know, it's not that he doesn't like painting with you. He just, he's uh, that age. They really, they see the other kids doing it and they want to get into it. But when it's with me, there's just too many other things he could be doing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, he's, he, and he's four, right? He's just turned four. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, definitely, it's different dynamics uh, with with children than with adults. And I have like the youngest student I have had probably was six, and she was in the group of eight year olds. Uh, and I, I actually, when I started, when I did that, you know, little kind of art camp with with my neighborhood children, uh, I was terrified at first because oh I, ne <laughs> I never worked I with children that. before. Yeah. I have. No like with adults, you can, you know, you can create a voice of reason, right? So right. Uh, you can so explain funny. to them how things work. You can, right. you know, give them some encouragement and they, right. they have enough self-awareness to, you know, uh, even if they judge themselves, you can talk them out of it somehow mm -hmm. and, you know, right. encourage them to do, you know, experiments and stuff. Yeah. With children, I had no idea what would be their attention span if uh, what they like, uh, because, yeah. you know, painting, it's like it's sitting concentrating painting right mm -hmm. and that should be kind of a you know a fun activity for them so I was the first couple of classes I was really really terrified then I, I then I started bringing different materials we were doing like imprints of leaves and flowers mm -hmm. and uh, finger painting and other stuff and and then your owl was like a, a jewel in a crown <laughs> oh that's so nice <laughs> yeah and then I learned the hard way because I did a very um a very big group uh, class online for adults and they asked me if they can bring children and they chose owl uh, to be uh, a subject and i said well i i did it with children before but i mean mm -hmm. not gonna be a problem please and children just got bored interesting so, yes they they couldn't they, because with adults I would you know explain to them when we were mixing color we did right. mix colors with children too but I I wasn't boring them with the color theory and all that stuff mm. and adults really take their time to yes. like 
you know, cover the background with stuff or make right. sure that their circles are uh, correct. Children yeah. just need to go boom, 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 boom fast. Yes. So within like 15 minutes, all the children disappeared from the class. Oh, that's so funny. That's <laughs> just like my son. He fit in well. <laughs> oh, it was yeah, really it's funny. So, isn't that interesting? I, like you, I've always found it harder to teach kids and, and adolescents too, just because I I want them to like me. I'm like a people pleaser. And I'm like, I can't tell what they're thinking. <laughs> you know, these teenagers. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny how you learn so much when you work with different. Yeah. Agencies. And yeah. art. Yeah. Art is such an amazing tool to, to learn more about yourself and who you're with. Um, Do you teach? Um, in terms of art? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I asked that because I my actually my nursing background was more education. But um, yeah, with art, um, I do teach and I have taught. Um, so in 2018, uh, let me just think, 2017 and 2018, I wanted to share this passion I had found. And um, so sort of similar to what you did is rounding up like, you know, neighbors that would might whether young people, adults that had interest, I started a meetup group, which um, uh, it was called Meetup Calgary. And I, I just called it Art for Your Heart. And um, I like plays on words. So um, yeah, I always would capitalize the art in the word heart. And uh, I just set up this meetup group. And I had so many supplies that I had bought, I thought, I'll just bring them to the local libraries. It's a free space. Um, it gets me out of the house. And at that time, I was going through some health challenges, IVF or, you know, difficult pregnancy. And and yeah, and it was just, I really enjoyed just being able to share with adults that had stressful jobs that wanted to meet up at the library and just do intuitive art. So I uh, would take these homemade spray inks and um, actually that's one of the main art supplies I would use for my art journaling when I started was, you know, those um, baking food gels, they're called mm -hmm. Wilton food gels. So they're mm -hmm. non-toxic. Yeah. So vibrant and people make icing for cupcakes, whatever out of them. So I uh, I went to Michael's, I got a coupon, so half price of like this box. Bulk Barn had all these individual little, you could buy individual colors. And um, and then I, I just bought some cheap, really well-working water bottles, like uh, spray bottles. And I'd put a little bit of the gel in with a popsicle stick, add some warm water, shake it up. And I did get this off of, um, there's a lovely lady on YouTube that um, I could always give you the link, but she showed me sort of how to make them. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. And um, instead of buying the really costly mixed media spray inks that are at all the stores, you know, where you're paying uh, like $17 for three sprays, uh -huh. this would cost me less than a dollar. And the sprays were so vibrant and they weren't archival. But, you know, I, I started to make, I made probably, I don't know, 30 to 50 spray bottles and I would take them to the library. And that's how we would do our first uh, base of color on any kind of paper um, obviously 140 pounds and up is better, but we would just spray color and we would put the papers together and unfold them. And then we would share with each other. So mm -hmm. if someone had warm colors, um, you know, or I, I wasn't necessarily teaching color theory, but we would, I'd be like, Oh, you know, my paper turned out, you know, here's sort of like, you know, when you pull the paper apart, you both mm -hmm. have a copy, right? So we would share our copies if people wanted, we would let them dry. It dries fairly quickly, but sometimes we'd bring a hair dryer, and then you could put paint pens over top. So when it was dry, um, people would find like finding a shape in the clouds. Um, they would find their own image, um, or they would just write a word or their grocery list. You know, it didn't have to be anything like song lyrics, and it was just seeing such joy in people that were like, "I'm not an artist, and I'm really nervous to be here," and. Uh, yeah, I just wanted so badly to share the passion I had found um, with the meetup groups. So I did them for a long time and actually right up until the pandemic. And I have to say, um, it became exhausting after a while, getting the supplies and setting up and renting the space. And and uh, so I don't know how much teaching I would do like that again, but I'd love to do more online stuff. Um, so, Well, first of all, thank you for the tip with uh, food coloring. Oh, I should so try that. Fun. It really is fun. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I totally, I totally get it though, because getting, getting something, uh, yeah, getting a whole group of people organized and supply uh, all the art supplies and everything, uh, it, it is 
uh, it is, it's a labor. It's, it is. Yeah. And especially yeah. if you were doing it during pregnancy. Yeah. And I was doing it for free, you know, and, yes, I say just were like five dollars just to cover supplies or whatever. And so, yeah, it, it, it it's funny. Eventually, you know, my husband would say to me, he's a really good sounding board. He's, he's like, I know you love sharing your passion, but he's like, you know, it is pretty exhausting for you to carry it just physically carrying everything in. And if the library was not open on time mm -hmm. or if there's an issue with the space. Yeah. Again, it was finding that, you know, what what's going to not remove this passion for from me like how am I going to hold on to this passion while finding how to share it yeah so when I decided to start teaching it was kind of uh uh, uh it was scary but what I did scary. yeah I signed up with Michaels oh yes I had done that yeah. briefly yeah I've heard that there's a very different Canadian versus um U U.S. um you're in California right yeah yeah but for us it was yeah, we, we had challenges um, just because we were in Canada. So it was it was being run out of the state. So, you know, again, if the room was booked um, and I had an issue, there was no one that could help because, yeah, it was very complicated. So, it, yeah, I'd love to hear your experience on that. Um, well, I think that's a brilliant idea. It's not quite straightforward in, in the U.S. as well. I, I'm just lucky that I have Michael's right 10 minutes away from my house. So if I need to talk to a manager or something like that, and uh, right now the the classrooms are closed at Michael's, so right. yeah, they shut down in uh, like February, probably February twenty twenty. Okay. And they still still did not reopen, so mm. I'm kind of trying to. Uh, but the problem is they are not communicating with teachers very well. You kind of right. have to go and figure out stuff for yourself. It's not like it's they so start hard. sending a messages like, "Hey, we're reopening, so I book your know. classes." Blah blah blah. But yeah. anyway, that was kind of an interesting, um, sort of an, an easy way for me to get started because I was really self conscious about advertising uh, my classes. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, no one knows me. Who's gonna Who's gonna work with me? <laughs> and right here in the in the community. Uh, so uh, Michaels, we have we have pretty good community. I I signed up with Michaels. I advertised it on the local community mm -hmm. Facebook group, the like a neighborhood group, and said, hey, uh, I have the classes at Michaels. Blah blah. blah so if you want, please come. A few mm -hmm. friends showed up, so I had classes about six eight people um, for. So it was late 2019 through January, probably 2020 before mm. the lockdown. So I had a few classes there and, and I had good experience. And when we went into lockdown, it's like, okay, I have to take it online. And oh, I, started, I started advertising classes uh, with Eventbrite. Oh, yes. And that actually worked. Uh, I rarely would get like a big group of people, but I happened to work with people in Australia in India, in uh, in Canada, uh, in, anywhere in the U.S., and it was just I was like, wow, there's a whole world out there. Yeah, I never would have thought of Eventbrite, but that's so smart, and I like the idea. You know, with Michaels, I know they really wanted me to have a supply list. Of course, everyone had to buy everything at Michaels, and it would get very expensive. So that was sort of my reasoning for the library. But Eventbrite would be really neat. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious to know, was it really hard to think of what the supply list would be when you had people all over the world with different, um, or would you keep it so basic? I would try to keep it basic. And uh, my primary medium is acrylic. So mm. uh, I usually come up with something that would be very easy uh, to do with a very basic acrylic set. So a mm. couple of different brushes. And even if they have primary colors, again, do your owls they work yes. with primary colors yes the owls are amazing I love too that you can layer on them like it's like yeah. you know um you can go back to them add sparkles or you can go back and add more paint or yeah, yeah you can make a mixed media out of it absolutely yeah and uh, uh most uh, most of the people who would sign up they are kind of uh, there are people who are already have experience with like sip and paint or they have some kind of a hobby. So mm. they usually have some supplies around the house. Uh, even if they need to buy like a couple of colors of paint, uh, they like always have some, you know, glues and uh, scissors and old magazines for mixed media because sometimes classes would go off the hands like, cool let's try that like right. do you want to go crazy let's 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 do something crazy on top of it like so it, it was never 
it was I was always trying to not to keep it uh, as a sip and paint kind of thing. I was right. always trying to take it a little bit further. That's so, amazing. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, that's that was really interesting. You all uh, have to look out for your future Eventbrite invites, or you know, if you do that, that's really neat. I I stopped doing it for a while, uh, but I picked up a couple of long term students from there, uh, and. Now I'm trying to kind of advertise through my website, but uh, I, it takes a lot of work. So maybe it, that does. it would be a better idea. It does. Yeah. You know, I just, yeah. I just created a Vimeo channel and I was learning how to embed videos on my personal website, but yeah, it really is exhausting learning all of the ins and outs, whether it's social media or the, uh-huh. you know, we have so many, um, we have so much technology accessible, but I'd rather paint. So I really struggle. I sit down and I'm like, I'll spend 10 minutes trying to figure out how to embed a video. And then I'm like, I'd rather paint. So, you know, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I hope to eventually have more teaching online somehow as well, but yeah, need to explore those options. Yeah. When you decide to do online classes, sign me in. Oh, amazing. And Thank if you for saying that, and if that's awesome. going to happen by the time, uh, we released the episode. We will make sure to include the link to your art classes oh, in thank our you so much. blog post as well. That's so wonderful. We're actually almost at the top of the hour. So why wouldn't you tell people how to find you? Oh, for sure. Um, so I definitely, I'm on Instagram daily. I'm not proud of that. <laughs> um, but Art by Ali Mack. Um, yeah, my name is Allison with two L's, Dorant, D-A-W-R-A-N-T. Um, so that's the best way to kind of see what I'm up to every day. And, uh, then eventually I want to do less social media. So I've set up my own website at artbyallymac.com and, uh, I have a print website. So I do a lot of prints, uh, canvas and gicle prints of my work and that's, uh, artmagic.ca and, uh, artmagic is spelled with a C, not a K. So yeah, that's the best way to find me. All right. Well, and we will make sure to include all the links in the show notes and the adjacent blog blog post that uh, awesome. comes along with the uh, um, with this episode. Oh, that's so uh, kind. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm oh, thank you. I'm for so having happy. Me. I was uh, I, ever ever since your owls, I was thinking about okay, I I, I got to connect to that woman. And when I started uh, doing a podcast, uh, it, it seemed like your art uh, your art practice started booming and I was like okay she's probably busy she's not going to talk to me at all <laughs> no I'm so honored like yeah I'm so honored so um I'll isolate with you or I'll I'll do a podcast with you any day <laughs> okay I'll... let's do it again then <laughs> yeah well, and I am so incredibly grateful for you to be so nice about me stealing your work from my classes <laughs> no like I said my inspiration is pulled from other artists and oh yeah no I I just I feel it's so neat how everybody has created their own owls and uh, I love that you've offered that to people and bringing people joy through through that so thank you for all that you do and just inspiring everybody through your podcast and your your social media well back at you thank you for inspiring <laughs> everybody <laughs> okay thanks we'll, we'll we'll follow each other's creative journeys and absolutely yeah. and we will have you back uh, on the podcast thank you so much galena thank you allison okay. and you have a great day and you i will time in the art scene it has been another episode of in the art scene podcast if you like today's conversation please give us a good review on apple and go listen to other great stories. Check out our website intheartscene.com or follow us on Instagram at intheartscene for more content. If you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene. <laughs>